Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the Khmer Ballista Elephant. There is so much to love about this unit. The fact it's a combination of an elephant archer, scorpion, and in some ways a battle elephant all in one. The fact it was a real thing historically, believe it or not, with Khmer elephants carrying a large crossbow. They're the only castle age unit that can cut a path through trees, which is pretty unique, as otherwise onagers and trebuchets are the only other ones who can do it. And fun fact, if you put 10 ballista elephants in a transport ship, it shows miniature elephants peeking out the sides. This is not a mod, you can try it yourself. Really, how can you not love this unit? Now, that said, they have a mixed reputation, partly because for a long time they had lower attack than they do now, when a lot of players were first exposed to them. And on top of that, they took a bunch of extra bonus damage from their counters beyond what was expected. So subjectively, they didn't feel great for a lot of years. As of this last year though, their attack has gone up by 2 and they no longer take that unexpected extra damage. So they've quietly become quite a bit better. At the same time, I'd consider them still one of the most counterintuitive unique units, especially when it comes to upgrades as we'll see. To start though, let's do a brief overview of the unit. Cost and stats wise, at first glance the Elephant Archer looks like a great point of reference. They have a fairly similar cost, meant relatively similar HP, armor, and even attack and range once the Elephant Archer has bought Canero. The Ballista Elephant's higher cost seems to be well compensated for, with its higher attack and pass through damage along with 100% accuracy, though on the flip side the Elephant Archer fires a bit faster and with upgrades has greater range. Obviously, there's a bit of give and take, though of course Khmer don't have the Elephant Archer, so you don't have to choose between them, but superficially they are quite similar. The other unit Ballista Elephants can also be compared to is the Scorpion. Both have passed through damage, but while Ballista Elephants are a bit faster attacking, Scorpions have them beat hands down in terms of damage and also range, especially after the Khmer's plus one Scorpion range team bonus. In this comparison, Ballista Elephants seem to be giving up a lot for their better HP. And it's no wonder many players opt for scorpions over elephants when looking for a ranged support unit. To dwell on that pass through damage for a moment, the bolt has the same width as a scorpion and has a similar effect of dealing half damage to non-targeted units it passes through. Though notice it doesn't travel as far beyond its target, only making it an extra one or two tiles, compared to the scorpion dealing damage up to six tiles here past its target. This is made even worse at close range for the elephant, as units at point blank range cause the bolt to simply drop straight down, and removes any pass through damage entirely. While they don't have a minimum range per se, functionally it means they do much worse than you'd expect if units are able to get close and completely surround them. Now I mentioned I think they're one of the more counterintuitive unique units, and now we'll see why. Looking at some of the hidden bonuses at play, they deal extra damage to ships, strangely, which is not something you see in elephant archers or scorpions, and have several types of bonuses against buildings, much more than the simple plus two that scorpions have. Three of that bonus damage is blocked by masonry, but just as much isn't blockable, meaning they actually end up being pretty good against buildings compared to many similar ranged support units, and in this regard actually feel most similar to a battle elephant. On the other hand, their bonus damage taken is maybe a bit more intuitive, taking extra damage from anything anti-cavalry, anti-elephant, and anti-siege, with things like onagers and bombard cannons having a pretty good bonus. They also have a special armor class shared with Hussite wagons that leads to an extra 20 damage from mangonels and bombard cannons, 30 more than expected from onagers, and as of the August patch, plus 6 from villagers that isn't blocked by armor. Notice, unlike Elephant Archers, they don't take Archer or Cavalry Archer bonus damage, so Skirmishers are not a particular threat to them. Moving on to their upgrades, again, here it can be a little counterintuitive. Like any Cavalry, they're affected by Bloodlines and Husbandry, but where Elephant Archers are upgraded by Archer armor, and Siege typically can't have its armor improved, the Ballista Elephant is affected by Cavalry armor. Personally, I used to be a little surprised by that, as they do pierce damage like an Elephant Archer, and are in fact the only unit affected by Cavalry Armor that has a pierce attack. On the flip side, like most Siege, they gain plus one range from Siege Engineers, plus one attack from Chemistry, and have the unique double crossbow upgrade giving a second projectile. Now, to give a quick test of your AoE2 intuition, one might then wonder if this is a Cavalry or Siege unit when it comes to healing, and if it needs a Monk or a Villager to repair. For that matter, can they be garrisoned in castles like cavalry, or are they more like siege that can't be garrisoned, and do you need redemption to convert them? This is why I consider it a bit of a tricky unit to wrap your head around, as there isn't an obvious answer to any of these, and probably the best rule when in doubt is to think of them as battle elephants. 
It turns out they can be garrisoned in castles, unlike siege, do not require redemption to convert, and are healed by monks, again unlike siege units. In fairness, a villager repairing it would be spending food in gold, and I can't imagine hammering food onto an injured elephant would be particularly effective, so probably a good call there by the devs. But with a lot of their hidden things out of the way, now let's move on to the Imperial Age, where their elite upgrade is actually relatively cheap, comparable to the Elephant Archer, and less expensive than the Elite Battle Elephant, or certainly the Persian Elite War Elephant. Of course, the Elite upgrade is relatively light, only giving plus 1 attack, plus 40 HP, and a little more bonus against buildings. Personally, I'd prioritize chemistry and armor upgrades first, though going from 10 to 11 base attack is still helpful, considering a lot of units in Imperial have up to 6 or 7 pierce armor, so the percentage increase to your damage can be pretty significant, even if it is technically just plus 1. The extra range from Siege Engineers is also arguably worth picking up before the Elite upgrade, as generally one extra range is better than one attack or an uptick in HP. Of course, one factor driving up the price here a bit is the unique tech Double Crossbow. To briefly explain how this works, the second projectile has 6 pierce attack, or 7 after chemistry, compared to your main attack of 12 when fully upgraded. The way it's done means it's largely negated by armor, and can only be relied on to do 1 or 2 damage in many cases, though it can pass through multiple targets, adding up a bit that way. I would caution not to overestimate its effect though, and it actually looks a lot scarier than it is. Even in a multi-tech mod game, with double crossbow researched 10 times, they're still less effective against groups than two ballista elephants without the tech, partly because extra projectiles slow down your overall firing rate, but I think it puts things into a bit of perspective. Now of course, as is tradition, having looked at the unit on paper, at this point let's try a few different tests and see how they do against some common units that they'll encounter. Here, I'm going to be assuming you're an Imperial Age for this, as 10 Ballista Elephants are the same cost as the Imperial Age upgrade, so you don't tend to see a lot of them in Castle Age. Much more commonly, they're used as a late game closed map unit, where you're fully boomed and just looking for some solid firepower with a bit of durability. Here, we'll start things off at the Archery range and dial in on the Elite Skirmisher. While it's true they don't take bonus damage from skirmishers like archers do, keep in mind the Ballista Elephant has only 2 more pierce attack than an Arbalester, meaning its damage is also fairly muted. Instead, here the Scorpion's higher attack makes it arguably the best choice, though I should point out the Ballista Elephant technically ends with the most HP left over out of the three, and naturally the Elite Elephant Archer here does by far the worst. The main point is just that the Elite Skirmisher is not a great choice against Ballista Elephants unless you have completely overwhelming numbers or make very good use of their slightly longer range. Similarly, most of that is also true for our Ballesters as well, where Ballista Elephants are generally pretty effective, ending here with 93% of their HP left when fighting one on one. Our Ballesters do have a couple more range and technically can win with equal resources, especially with Micro, but in general I'd say archery range units just aren't that great against mass Ballista Elephants in especially tight spaces, as they just don't deal enough damage. But now let's talk about Infantry. Obviously, the big one here is Halberdiers, who have massive bonus damage against Elephants. In this case, the Heavy Scorpion is pretty clearly the best performer, though the Ballista Elephant actually holds its own, only doing about 12% less damage over time than the Chimera Scorpion, albeit for a higher cost, with the Elephant Archers doing by far the worst, even with Parthian Tactics. Now while of course Halberdiers are a very good counter on paper, generally I found if you can mass 20 or more Ballista Elephants, they can actually handle most infantry, at least infantry with low pure armor like Halberdiers. On the flip side, none of these units last long if Halberdiers are able to close the gap, especially if you have small numbers. This is why it's important to have a meat shield in front, whether it be your own Halberdiers or even Hazars, just to slow the enemy spears down long enough to protect your gold units and let the Ballista Elephant do its thing. Of course, as we go up against infantry with higher and higher pierce armor, that is going to be a problem for the Ballista Elephant, and certainly against something like Haskarls, while you're not taking bonus damage, you're also doing very little damage of your own. Now, facing cavalry is where things get interesting, and highlights two important things about the Ballista Elephant. First, remember its pierce attack is not that high, so it actually takes two and a half times as many shots as a Khmer Heavy Scorpion to bring down a Paladin, though they are better than Elephant Archers or Arbalesters without Thumbring. In cases like this, or against anything else with very high pierce armor, you start to be better off with a scorpion composition, mixed with halberdiers, battle elephants, or hazar, depending on what you're up against and have the gold for. But personally, I'd start to shy away from ballista elephants as soon as you're up against something with 7 or more pierce armor, like a paladin. 
Now, that doesn't mean they're always bad against cavalry, and on the flip side, against lower armor cavalry, like arguably camels, but especially hussars, the ballista elephant is basically as good as the scorpion, while being much more durable. Combined with a lack of minimum range, to me, elephants are a better choice than scorpions, if there's a lot of hussars or even camels around. And as long as you're okay for gold, they'll trade cost effectively against hussars, even when massively outnumbered, say two to one. Though, again, ideally you'd want a meat shield in front anyway. Just to highlight that fact, in this test, 20 versus 40, the ballista elephants ended with half their HP left without micro in a completely open position, which is pretty much the worst case scenario. Playing against cavalry is also when we see how important it is to micro ballista elephants. Remember, units up close cause them to fire straight downward and miss out on any of that pass through damage. So here with equal resources, a group of Castle Age Knights beat ballista elephants. Not by a ton, but it's definitely in the knight's favor, as so much of the elephant's damage is quite literally being thrown on the ground. If we introduce some micro though, the results flip dramatically. That's partly because we're giving the knights more issues with pathing and more distance to cover, but also because we're better able to keep the knights on one side of the elephants and taking more of that pass through damage. Especially by targeting knights farther back manually, we can make sure multiple knights are taking damage with every shot and they aren't going straight down. In fact, Ballista Elephant Strike Me is one of the most micro-dependent units you can find, as you get all the regular benefits of hit and run, plus the extra help of maximizing your pass-through damage. But finally, we'll close things out with Siege, and this is where Ballista Elephants have a big problem. Onagers, of course, deal a lot of bonus damage against them, and are probably the best counter, especially since they also outrange your elephants as well. Of course, Khmer don't have Bombard Cannons as an option to try to mitigate things here, so Onager should always be your number one concern, followed maybe by Monks or enemy Bombard Cannons, which can also exploit the Ballista Elephant's relatively short range. Even Scorpions have a bit of secret bonus damage against Elephants, outrange them, while being a bit cheaper on a per unit basis. Especially if you pile up a group of Ballista Elephants in a choke point, Scorpions can definitely be a very real threat. If that wasn't enough, as strange as it sounds, even rams can be dangerous, as they have very high pierce armor and a lot of anti-siege bonus damage. Especially now that you can queue up targets to attack by holding shift, this is actually not impossible to pull off, though even just mixing a few in front to soak up the ballista elephant's attacks can also be quite effective. It feels like we're ending on a bit of a negative note here, given ballista elephants have been looking quite good until we bring up siege units. This is, of course, also where Hazars can come in, backed up by the Khmer's Great Farmers, and are fully upgraded, making that a pretty common pairing. So that's the Ballista Elephant. Obviously, it has quite a bit of overlap with the Heavy Scorpion, sacrificing some attack and range in favor of extra durability, and being able to take an Onager shot. It is quite a solid unique unit in the right situation if you can get past its quirks and can actually afford it. Hopefully this gave you a better idea of what you can expect from them moving forward. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.